we shouldn't be so discouraged. You know, we look at everything saying, well, I need, to, I need to eat organically, and I need to drink pure water, and I would like you to do that, and I, would, I need to get rid of my perfumes, and I want you to do that. Some of these things we can do, but isn't there anything else we can do? Are we just sitting ducks, and we're all going to get cancer, like one out of three people in the U.S. now have cancer? Is that what's going to happen to us? Do we just have to accept that and say, this is my fate in life? Absolutely not. We come back fighting, on guard. Let's go. Let's fight this cancer. Let's get rid of it. We are not some type of fluff that's just going to be burned up in some metabolic reaction. We can do something. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to build the immune system. The immune system is an incredibly intelligent and incredibly powerful system within each one of us. The immune system makes a very specific cell called a T killer. A T killer cell is a white blood cell, as all immune system cells are. And this white blood cell has the ability, it's built in, it's a really smart cell, to look for a cell that is cancerous. See, cancer is really, really tricky because every cell in your body has an ID card. So there's a macrophage that goes around. The macrophage is another white blood cell that goes around and says, I need to check your ID card. And so then you hold out your ID and say, I belong to Karen. I belong to Karen's body. Leave me alone. Don't attack me. I'm, I'm one of the home folks, OK? I'm not a foreigner. Don't kick me out. And so this white blood cell macrophage goes along and checks every single cell in your body. Because if you don't belong, if that cell doesn't be belong, immediately the macrophage will attack. It actually calls in a T, T suppressor and a T helper that's other parts of the immune system. And we attack that, that intruder. That's bacteria. That's virus. That's fungus. Okay, those are diseases that we're catching. And you want the macrophage to say, you don't belong. You're a foreigner. You don't have a cell ID. Cancer has a cell ID. Why? Because it was you. It was you in the beginning. But it just sort of mutated. It's exactly what happens. It's a mutation into another cell till it was displaced and it became cancerous. So it has a cell ID. So it tricks the macrophage. The macrophage says, oh, you're good. You're part of the group. You're part of the family. This is old home week. So we need a smarter cell than the macrophage. And that would be your T killer. You have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of T killer cells. And a T killer cell is specifically designed to check every cell in your body to say, are you a part of Karen or are you not? Are you a part of you, each person? Are you not? And when it gets this little garbly gook answer that, well, here's my cell ID, except but you don't look right. You don't look like you belong. Something's happened to you. You're mutated, and you're going to damage this body. Once the T killer identifies a cancer cell, it literally, if you guys ever want to see cool videos, go on the internet and just type in T-Killer and, you know, and then you can see videos. We have videos because we have these fabulous microscopes nowadays. We can watch a T-Killer cell eat a cancer cell. It's, it's better than those little, what are those, Pac-Man? Remember way back in the early computer days, Pac-Man goes around, gobbles up things? It's even better than that. It actually, it's like a phage. It just it just comes up on a cancer cell and it just covers over the top of it and just completely engulfs it and just takes it right into itself and kills the cancer cell. It's just an incredible thing to watch. And one T-killer, it actually attaches to the cell wall. And let me give you some perspective of size, too, because these cancer cells, they're big and they're bulky and the T-killer is relatively small in comparison. We'll make a cancer cell, ugly looking cancer cell. Oftentimes, the T killer is just this big and it spreads out like a liquid and it just spreads out over the whole cell until literally the whole thing is engulfed in inside that T killer cell. And then it'll go over to the neighboring cancer cell and attach itself to there. And we can actually see where it attaches. When we can see this under the microscope and with these cool methods we have where it attaches and it just goes and just sucks that cancer cell up. And four to five minutes, a T killer can eat an entire cancer cell. And four to five minutes. It's pretty amazing. But you have 
tens of thousands. That's a, I mean, it's, it, it's in a scientific notation of how many cancer cells you have. We're not sure how many cells a T killer can eat before it will die, but we're, we estimate somewhere between 1,000, maybe 10,000, we're not sure. It can eat a lot of cells. Then what happens to your T killer? It dies. It's okay, don't feel sorry for the T killer. It fulfilled its, its job. In the meantime, we don't just have one T killer, we have lots and lots of T killers that are going out and eating cancer cells and eating dysplasia cells too. Remember the precancerous condition is called dysplasia and the dysplasia, the T killers kill that too. It's wrong, it doesn't belong, it's a mutated cell, we're gonna get rid of it. So T killers, powerful, powerful. So we wanna enable our T killer cells. We want them to march out there and bring down the enemy. So how are we gonna do that? We have to build them up, we have to create them. We create them by the consumption of protein.